Martin Luther King Jr., Cesar Chavez, Nelson Mandela, leaders synonymous with civil rights movements around the world. In the 1970s, Judy Human, Ed Roberts, and other activists started a movement that swept the country. No longer willing to accept the status quo, they fought the United States government for the rights of people with disabilities and won. In her memoir, Judy Human, the only daughter of German Jewish immigrants, recounts life growing up in Brooklyn, the monumental 504 sit in at the San Francisco Federal Building, and her illustrious disability activism career, affecting change around the world. Welcome to Behind the Book with Ability 360 with Judy Human and her co author, Kristen Joyner. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Episode 3 of Behind the Book with Ability360, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Casey Kaler, and I am joined here by a few of my colleagues from Ability360. Today, we will be talking with Judy Human and Kristen Joyner about COVID-19 and the effect it has had on the disability community in particular. If we're really doing a cross-disability movement, then we really need to be delving more deeply into the barriers that people face in various communities. And right now with the COVID situation, and you look at the higher incidence rate of black and brown people dying, and people are talking about underlying conditions. The underlying conditions are all disabilities, hypertension and diabetes, you know, which, and, uh, which are two of the issues that people talk a lot about. You know, these are people in not all cases, but in many cases, we're not getting the kinds of healthcare services, et cetera, to ensure that their diabetes and hypertension were being appropriately addressed. And when they're dying from all of this, you know, some of us are beginning to say, you know, these are disabled individuals. They are black and brown. They are also disabled individuals. We need to be really careful that this, we, we need to really think strategically about what we're gonna do so that we're not forced in a situation where more people are being put in segregated, restricted nursing homes and other um, institutional settings, especially when we're seeing the, again, higher incidence rate of disabled people and workers in these segregated uh, places dying um, because of disability plus living in those situations, um, the virus is being spread quicker and people not having PPE or appropriate um, clothing, et cetera. You know, thinking about what we're seeing now in the US and around the world as a result of COVID, you know, one of the big issues that everybody should be seeing is um, one, the weakness of our healthcare system that 25 to 28 million people are gonna lose their healthcare because they're getting their healthcare from employers. And if they're losing their jobs, they're, they're losing their healthcare. And do, do people really believe that as a country that is a, it's the wealthiest country in the world, we don't have an obligation to ensure people get decent healthcare? I think, you know, for me, what is very, um, makes me deeply concerned is how, as people in the United States, we give so little credence to what is happening in other countries. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've always been drawn to international work. I mean, I remember when I was young and my mother would talk about healthcare in Germany and how everybody had access to healthcare and how we didn't. And the first time I traveled to Europe, as I was saying, when I went for the wheelchair games, I was in Germany and then I went to Sweden. And, you know, where people really, Canadians, anybody, they don't get the US. They do not get that we don't have health insurance. Now, every health insurance is not the same in other countries, but, you know, my, my cousin goes 
he he's, lives in the U.S. now, but he went to graduate school in Canada. And when he went to graduate school in Canada, the whole healthcare issue was completely different. He had a card, he got healthcare. Um, so we're not inquisitive. You know, we don't we don't value because when you feel like everything here is right and nothing can be better, you're not asking questions. You know, you're not really, I mean, Kristen can talk about healthcare in New Zealand. I'm sure there's good and bad, but the reality is I presume in New Zealand, everybody has healthcare, right? And people would not have any understanding of how could you live in a country where everyone doesn't have healthcare. Um, my mother went to Canada. The bus driver said that you know he lived in Canada before there was health care, but once he had it, he could never imagine to going back any any other way. the The lack of coordination of the health care system can make you feel can make me feel overwhelmed. But at the end of the day, it's like I've got to deal with it, right? You can feel like that, but at the end of the day, I can't not deal with it. And I think one thing all of us at this discussion right now who have disabilities clearly and, and have friends with disabilities, whatever, clearly understand the absence of a coordinated healthcare system in this country. And I think that speaks to many other things. And it's not to say that other countries don't have those same kinds of problems, but independent living, you know, really, it's about understanding that some of us have complex needs that we need to address. Housing, transportation, healthcare, income, employment, these are all part of a whole person. And when you have obstacles in each one of these places that are based on disability or based on disability and discrimination, it may be impacting other people, we need to explain to people including those people that are affected by it, what our vision of what we need is. So feel overwhelmed for a couple of seconds, but then be done with it and be problem solvers. I mean, and if you look at the leadership that's going on around right now, around the COVID-19 virus, the female leaders across the world that are having success against this in this pandemic are, having, are using the same skills and attributes that Judy was using in the section, you know, in all of her work, but it, you really see it in the section five of four sit in, which is this, you know, ground, they were grounded in strategy and, you know, people now are grounded in the science and strategy. And at the time they were grounded in policy and strategy. And then it was about collaboration and consensus and leading with empathy and making sure the collective, mobilizing the collective for a larger goal.